Hi there, Sandra here and welcome to a new video. So in today's video I'm going to show you how I print my stickers and how I pack my orders. I don't usually make videos filming myself but I wanted to try something different and I think it's going to be a bit easier to explain in front of the camera and show you around. So in today's video I'm very happy to show you how I print my stickers, what papers, a printer, cutting machine I use for making my stickers and show you the packaging supplies I use for packing my orders. And I will talk about a little about the whole process from switching printing my art from a company to switching printing my art at home, which I made this change since last summer 2019 and I've been wanting to make this video since then so I'm very happy to finally make this video and share it with you. And this video is in collaboration with No Issue, which I'm so happy about and I'm so excited to show you what I created with No Issue. And I hope this video will be somehow helpful to any artist who is interested to open an online shop and is interested on printing their art at home. So yeah, let's start the video. So first of all, let me show you the printer and cutting machine I use for printing and cutting my stickers, which are behind here. <laughs> so the printer I use is the Canon Pixma Pro 100S and by doing some research, it's one of the best professional printer that I've seen other artists using as well. And that's because it has 8 ink cartridges, so it has a professional printing quality. While regular printers have only 4 ink cartridges. Other printer might be fine for printing your art at home and selling art prints, but I can't say for sure without experience. But I have another old printer with 4 ink cartridges but the print quality is definitely not professional and not suitable for selling art prints. And the machine I use for cutting stickers is the Silhouette Cameo 3. I chose the Silhouette instead of the Cricut or Silcut, not sure how to pronounce it, which is another machine that I've seen other artists use for two main reasons. Living in Switzerland, the Silhouette was more accessible for me to buy from my local stores but I can easily buy and replace accessories like the blade, cutting mat and things like that. It's also cheaper than the Cricut. I wasn't looking about prices but it's something worth mentioning. And my second reason was because from the research I did I wasn't sure if the Circut or Cricut has a USB cable to connect to my computer or it only worked with Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connection. My connection is not good, as I experienced with my old printer that had this option, which I tried but it didn't work, so I didn't want to risk it. The printer is great, but I have to admit that it took me a hot second <laughs> to figure out how the machine works. But once I figure out how the machine works, it does its job pretty well. And before I show you the printing process of my stickers, I wanted to show you the papers I use, both for my stickers and art print. But first of all, one tip I would recommend to someone interested on printing their art at home is to order sample packs if available so you can try different papers with different texture to see which one you like the best for your art. Instead of spending a lot of money on paper packs that you might end up not liking. But the thing is, even if I knew what paper other artists used that I saw on YouTube or from ordering something from my favorite artist, which is an option to both support your favorite artist and see the papers and supplies they use for printing their art and packing their orders to have some inspiration to find your own way to pack your orders. So I had to try those paper myself to really see if they worked for me and for my art prints. So I'm going to show you the papers I use, but keep in mind that these papers might not work for you. The paper I use for my art prints is the Hanemule Bamboo Fine Art Inkject Paper. I already used the bamboo mixed media paper for painting my illustrations, which is one of my favorite papers to paint with gouache. And the print quality on this paper is so beautiful that I love it for my art prints. 
and this paper has a slightly watercolor texture that is exactly the type of paper I was looking for for my art prints. I also use the Canon Premium Matte for printing my cards. I haven't found the perfect paper for printing cards yet, but the Canon Matte paper is a good option for me with a great printing quality. While for the sticker paper I use, the one I'm currently using is the waterproof matte sticker paper from online labels. I've seen other artists using online labels, so I wanted to try it myself, although I like the print quality, where the colors turn out almost the same as my original works. Once I finish them, I'm going to switch to Sattelfold, not sure how to pronounce it, final paper, which was my second favorite sticker paper from the ones I tried. I've also tried the photo paper direct matte sticker paper and silhouette vinyl paper. Finding a sticker paper I liked was the thing I've struggled the most because there aren't many options available and that are accessible to me living in Switzerland. To be honest, I would love to find a more sustainable option for making stickers, but it's really difficult to find something. But hopefully one day in the future I will find something more eco-friendly because unfortunately there is a lot of waste when making stickers. I will get into other supplies I use later, but finally let me show you how I make my stickers. My design is ready to be printed and I already did some printing tests to find the right size, color printing setting. I usually don't have to do more color adjustments on Photoshop as on the online label paper. The color turns out always nice at the first time, but I always have to do a couple of printing tests before proceeding to printing the stickers I'm going to sell. But I'm going to include these test stickers as extra goodies in orders or to decorate my envelopes for shipping as they are still good stickers so they don't get wasted. And maybe it's just me, but most of the time the color outcome or the print quality really depends on the printing setting I choose than making color adjustments on Photoshop. The color turns out so differently depending on the setting I use using the same paper like the example I have here. I save all the flowers on PNG file from Photoshop and import them individually on the Silhouette Studio program. I place all the flowers on the page, which then I create the cutting line directly on the software and I adjust the cutting line if I need to remove something or to soften the line. So once everything is ready, I print the stickers with my Canon printer and I get prepared with the silhouette machine. My cutting mat where I attach the sticker paper to cut the stickers is not sticky anymore as I use it many times now, but instead of buying a new cutting mat, I found a solution to stick the paper on the edges with the leftover sticker paper that I cut out from the previous stickers I printed. So the sticker paper stays fixed on the cutting mat and is not sliding around, which would be a problem for cutting stickers. I simply check during the cutting process each time if everything is okay, but so far it works. So I don't have to spend more money on a new cutting mat and I have more plastic around. And once I place the sticker paper on the cutting mat, I load it and give the okay to cut them. Okay, now that the stickers have been printed, I can show you how I pack my stickers, which is using paper envelopes. My biggest concern to not have plastic or any sort of waterproof protection is whenever an order gets damaged by weather and rain during the delivery process, but I believe it's very unlikely to happen. And other artists don't use plastic to pack their products and I would be more happy to not use plastic at all, so I'm gonna try and see how it goes. Then I'm going to use stickers to seal the envelopes. Depending on the order, I will be using some of the extra stickers I printed or I will be using the no issue stickers or tape that I still have from the no issue giveaway I won last autumn where I designed my tissue paper, sticker and tape. So yeah, let's move on how I pack my orders. For every order, I always include a thank you note and I write a hand 
with the message on the back of the small prints. It might not look super professional, but I find handwritten messages feels more personal that convey its best my appreciation to your support for supporting me and supporting my small business. So it's something I, I don't know, I really like that it really feels more personal. But I always wondered if making a thank you card to include for my orders. So thanks to No Issue, I had the opportunity to design a thank you card, which I had so much fun to create. These cards are made of 100% FSC certified recycled paper. They are compostable and printed with soy-based ink, so made with sustainable materials. No issue provides custom sustainable packaging, so for my next 50 orders, I will be including this. And after it, I will see if designing a new thank you card or I will continue to write thank you messages by hand. So I showed how I pack my stickers, but for my art prints, I placed them in cellophane bags until I have them, and then I wrapped them in my customized no issue tissue paper and sealed the wrapping with no issue stickers. And with these packaging supplies I designed from no issue that I won as a giveaway last autumn. It really adds that professional and personal touch to my orders, which now that I have them, I really like it. Depending on the order and weight of the package, I'm not always able to wrap my prints on the tissue paper, but when I can, I also like to include extra prints or stickers as my appreciation for the support. And then for shipping my orders, I used both hardboard backed envelopes and cardboard envelopes and I have them in different sizes depending on the order and size of the prints. I usually use this hardboard backed envelope for shipping stickers but once I finish this I will use regular envelopes but I will place like a hardboard support to make them more sturdy to protect my orders from bending and any damaging that can occur during delivery which unfortunately is out of my control but I try to protect my orders as best as I can so that they arrive in the same condition as I shipped them. I will leave the links to the websites where I order my packaging supplies as well as my colored envelopes in the description of this video but I can't remember all the names right now and I have to search for them. But they are Swiss or German based, so I'm not sure how helpful these can be to you. But if you live in Germany or Switzerland like me, this might be helpful. I haven't found a place where I can get recycled cardboard and regular envelopes for shipping my orders that is not too crazy expensive and is available to buy in bulk but at least all these envelopes are recyclable. And when possible, I buy cardboard envelopes that are FSC paper certified, so they come from a responsible source, like the Econopack envelopes I have here, which is something that I always look for when buying packaging supplies, because I do care for our environment and for all the living species that are living in our planet. So I try my best to choose more eco-friendly and sustainable options when I can and if available. But the thing is, living in Switzerland, I'm cut out from a lot of things and resources. I know some companies, UK and US based, like Eco Enclose or EcoCraft that sell recycled packaging materials which I would totally get them and it would be such a great option for a more eco-friendly business but the shipping to my country is either too expensive and not an option for me or some companies don't ship to my country. I highly recommend to watch the Alexon video about her eco-friendly packaging and check the comments because other people have shared other eco-friendly websites an eco-friendly option to pack and ship orders for artists like us 
so we'll leave some names and link to her video in the description so you can check it out but yeah back on how i pack my orders <laughs> obviously i put my return address the customer address and depending on the weight of the package and price of the shipping i can use stamps which i love to use it makes such a beautiful decoration for packages and then these hard port backed envelopes have already the do not bend writing on it but for the other envelopes i have i usually write please do not bend by hand but now i have my stamp that i designed with no issue and i chose the manual stamp that comes with a soy based ink pad i always wanted to make a please do not bend stamp which is going to be so handy to use so i don't have to write it by hand anymore i'm not used to use stamps and it's going to take me some tries until i get the hang of it but from trying the stamp for the first time now my design came out nicely and the stamp seems to work quite well although it doesn't seem to pick up much ink but I think it's because my ink pad had a leak during delivery, which is just unfortunate. But if I press hard the stamp on the ink pad, it works, so it's all good. So yeah, I'm going to use this stamp from now on. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it somehow helpful. It's not simple to become 100% eco-friendly. And there is always room for improvement. So I plan to switch to more sustainable options when I will be able to. All these supplies will be in the description of this video, as well as all the videos mentioned in this video. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and I will be more than happy to reply. A big thanks to No Issue for this collaboration. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!